Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. Is there really 500 ounces of silver in a Tomahawk cruise missile? That debate has gone along in various different precious metals uh, forums on the internet for quite some time. And the short answer to that question is we really don't know. There's no plans or anything out there that, that show it because it obviously it is a defense contract, so we're not going to really know. And, but where do those numbers come from and how do they, how do they arrive? Well, we can get some clue from this uh, opinion piece here from goldsilverbitcoin.com from actually 2014. A $251 million Tomahawk missile contract will require silver. And make no mistake, because it has electronics in it, silver is in most all electronics these days. Raytheon Company received a $251 million contract from the U.S. Navy to make Tomahawk Block 4 tactical cruise missile for fiscal year 2014 with an option for 2015, which according to some, means a lot of silver will soon be needed. Although much of this discussion surrounding the true composition of the Tomahawk missile is speculative, a boisterous group claims that 480 ounces of silver, 16 kilograms, is needed per cruise missile. Raytheon will build and deliver Tomahawk Block 4 cruise missiles to the U.S. Navy and the U.K. Royal Navy. Raytheon is charged with conducting flight tests and providing life cycle support. Production and delivery of the Tomahawk missiles is set to begin in 2015. The Tomahawk's range is more than 1,000 miles and is integrated on all major U.S. surface combatants and U.S. and U.K. submarines. If silver is used in these missiles, a lot of silver will be needed to fill this contract, but the exact numbers are fuzzy, as they are. Military applications aggregated are for sure a considerable use of industrial silver, there are a lot of electrical functions for the Tomahawk, such as GPS, satellite tracking, terrain mapping, powerful antennas, etc. Tomahawk missiles have a maximum distance of 1,500 miles. They travel between 500 to 600 miles per hour, implying a rough flight time of three hours. As one poster on Kitco's forums puts it, three hours of high-tech electronics, powerful antennas, mapping, rock-solid radar, and communication with satellites, all of that crazy all that with crazy altitudes and distance and velocity double that time to account for battery loss and aging why not just quadruple it so that it never presents a problem 12 hour flight time capable would be overbuilt for sure this is a military warhead though so overbuilt is probably the status quo and then from um uh au sairpower.net the control section of the missile contains the silver zinc battery power supply and launch aircraft captive power supply. The strapped down inertial package and the electromechanical servios used to actuate the wings, the aircraft electrical interface, and the act active optical proximity fusing system. The flight control employs roll stabilization by different actuation of the wings, which also provide pitch yaw control. The wings are constructed as a steel casting with a honeycomb trailing edge. We'll likely never know the true amount of silver used in military ap applications, but here's to hoping one day there's no demand for the sector. And um, I will go on to say that I had a, 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 a web page loaded up that showed, that talked about this, and uh, but it actually hurt my eyes because of the colors of the website, so I didn't put it on here. It literally was a shock to the eyes because it's a black screen with a yellow lettering and a bright. But basically it said that with those bombs dropped in Syria, I think this post was like from uh, 2000 or maybe Iraq or something like that from the early from the early 2010s, 2011 or so. It said that when you drop those bombs in Libya and in Iraq, you've essentially you're losing all that silver; it just disappears. But the thing is, is people don't realize that precious metals never disappear; they never go away. Um, you know, they can dissipate and they can spread out. And uh, but they can be reconstituted, especially you think about it. If there's that much silver in those bombs and there's a, enough of them dropped, 
well, don't you think that uh, that if it becomes economically viable, and that's really the key, to recover that silver, they could find a way to do it. You remember, not too long ago, I posted an article uh, and talked about an article about uh, this technology to be able to extract silver from sewage. So, yeah, they can do that. If they can do that now, imagine what they can do with any kind of recovery, not just for electronics, but also bombs that have been dropped, if there is that much silver in them. Uh, I found another forum here that discussed this, and uh, a quite interesting article here. It talks about it from Al Jazeera from back in 2013 from some of our cruise missiles launched. And uh, there's a, a former weapons designer that had an interesting post about this. Um, he has been doing electronics since two, uh, 1961. Silver is indeed used for things like BNC connectors, plating on RF coils and the like. The reason is, is even silver sulfide, the tarnish is still conductive. Not great, but better than open circuit. It's a thin plating no matter what. It's only a little better, but heavier in the same conductivity than copper. They don't use much and now use gold on contact fingers, etc., because it doesn't corrode in the first place. At high frequencies, nothing higher than 400 hertz, more like radio stuff, all electricity travels on the skin of the conductor. It's called the skin effect for that reason. And it's why nothing is made of solid silver, period. It's a lousy mechanical characteristics compared to other things, for one. It's why ham radio operators who build their own transmitters sometimes use copper tubing. The hollow out the middle um, doesn't make any difference. And the hardcore ones then silver plate the outside. I have a very strong suspicion that someone is mixing up milligrams or even micrograms with kilograms here. I have, for example, a box you can barely fit lift of silver plated stuff. It probably has as much less than one ounce of silver on it. And I can sort of attest to that because the solar panels, um, I did a little research and the solar, the standard solar panel has only about 20 grams of silver. And that's actually, in some cases, more than I thought it would be. It's uh, pretty crazy. But anyways, he kind of goes on there and talks about it. So this guy who was actually a uh, former uh, weapons designer, um, uh, doubts the claim and I kind of doubt it too um, and uh, here's another someone else who did a bit of searching and there doesn't seem to be any definitive source to confirm or correct the report and he found a seven page discussion on the Kitco forums from uh, a couple of years ago uh, where they had some talking about it and here's some stats from the uh, uh, that somebody had talked about silver. The bulk of silver supposedly is in the silver oxide batteries that are the best batteries to have in such a high-tech piece of a weapon. Picture is one of the suppliers of silver oxide batteries for military use. Now, if we go to the silver oxide battery page, we see batteries that weigh up to 205 pounds each. Now, I did some deductive reasoning to see if the claim may be true, so hear me out, he says. A Tomahawk missile weighs 2,900 pounds. Missiles use... Um, high capacity silver oxide batteries. Um, silver oxide battery supplier has one that is 250 pounds. Silver oxide battery recyclers give you 75% of spot. Silver oxide battery recyclers pay you $40 per AVDB pound. Therefore, one pound of silver oxide batteries equals about $53 of silver. So, 205 pound battery has about $10,865 worth of silver. So, uh, that is about 388 troy ounces, according to this. And that's probably, um, that's still a lot of silver um, uh, by any stretch. That's just in the battery. So if this is really true, if it uses this silver oxide battery, and if there's this chance that uh, perhaps that silver, that the balance of silver is using other components, then maybe it is over 400 ounces. Who knows? Uh, it's in a single missile, so yeah, we'll 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 see. But anyways, so very interesting, and I didn't, you know, there's probably more in this discussion thread here. Quite interesting, indeed, uh, to to uh, hear about this. But really, no one really knows um, exactly how much. We can bet our bottom dollar there is silver in a Tomahawk cruise missile and in pretty much any kind of smart technology, weapons technology, and military applications for sure. Uh, but as to how much there is, no one really knows. But if it does use the silver oxide batteries, there may be a little bit more. But it's not in the form that you and I would 
would be readily uh, accessible. You're not going to go to a missile site and see, you know, silver bars laying around or, or anything of the like. It's going to be in the silver oxide form. And still recoverable, though. Still recoverable if it's economically viable. So post your thoughts below about this. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.